90,000 bots to take on your WordPress password, CISPA heads to the house, and <gasps> hackers on a plane. All that and more this week on ThreatWire. Hello and welcome to ThreatWire. I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. And this is your summary of what's threatening security privacy and internet freedom. I'm totally not on a bunch of medication from my recent surgery. No, oh, no. not at all. That's okay, Darren. I'll try to keep yeah. you from laughing too much. Oh, it hurts On to laugh. the first story. WordPress, a free and open source blogging tool that can be used for website management, has become the victim of a large brute force attack where over 90,000 bots are said to be used to guess passwords. Hosting websites such as Melbourne Server Hosting and HostGator have posted warnings about the brute force attack, stating that websites may run slow or crash. Both of these hosts have also stated that the attack is global, at affecting all web hosts that serve WordPress websites. Not just them, actually. Hosts have asked users to update the WordPress passwords to non-dictionary terms using capitals, symbols, and of course, numbers. HostGator also posted a step-by-step -step guide to protect uh, your password in your wplogin.php file. Now, Matt Mullenweg, creator of WordPress, stated on his personal blog that there is a brute force attack going on, but you would just need to update your blog to the latest WordPress version if you haven't already, change your password and username if you still use admin, which you really shouldn't, and use two-factor authentication for WP.com, which I totally didn't know existed. Yeah, changing yeah. your username from admin to something else is like one of the first things you should do. Yeah. And it's gotten a lot easier. Anyway, CISPA, the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act, met its final stop before heading to the House. Now, the House Rules Committee saw Representative Mike Rogers characterizing opponents of CISPA as 14 year olds tweeting from their basement. <laughs> now, this resulted in thousands of CISPA opponents tweeting at Rep Mike Rogers that they're not 14 year olds in their basement and they still oppose CISPA. Now, Rogers, who obviously has a vast technical knowledge of how the internet works, asserts that no sensitive personal information or email content will be collected under the bill and sent to the government. In a response to a question from Representative Jared Polis, Rogers stated, quote, again, zeros and ones, hundreds and millions of times a second in patterns. It has nothing to do with content, nothing. Well, during the hearings, Polis remarked that the bill could have effects on internet users' trust of online services. Internet, quote, internet users, uh, if this were to become law, would be much more hesitant to provide their personal information, even if assured under the terms of use that they will be kept personal because the company would be completely indemnified if they voluntarily gave it to the United States government. Mm. Now, the thousands of tweeters aren't alone. 34 civil libertarian groups uh, sent an open letter opposing CISPA, including the ACLU, the EFF, Mozilla, Reddit, and more. And even more potentially persuasive opponent commented on Tuesday, the Obama administration, that's right, the Obama administration issued a public statement, quote, the administration still seeks additional improvements to, uh, and if the bill, as currently drafted, were presented to the president, his senior advisors would recommend that he veto the bill. That is, of course, as it currently stands. Uh, don't get me started. But uh, as we record this, the House, uh, this is actually going to House for Vote. So we will have a follow up next week and hopefully it will be good news. Yeah, I hope so. And guess what? Yes. Hackers can tr control a plane. They can? Ermagerd! Oh yeah, apparently it's true in a recent publishing, or maybe it's not. In a talk at a convention by security researcher Hugo Tesso, an Android app was said to be able to control a plane with a few security flaws. Now, Tesso claimed that this could be used to do simple tasks and, and pranks like bringing down the little oxygen mask to more complicated tasks, such as, well, crashing the plane. Make it do a barrel roll. Make it do a barrel roll. Now, Tesso was able to demonstrate this on a virtual air control system through the use of his Android app, flight code software, and a radio transmitter. Tesso did explain that this attack would only work on planes in autopilot, and control could be regained by a pilot with analog instruments if they were available in the plane. This alleged hack would be on the Honeywell NZ2000 flight management system that many planes currently use. Now, the FAA spokesman Les Dore described the hack as such. 
The FAA has determined that the hacking technique described during a recent computer security conference does not pose a flight safety concern because it does not work on certified flight hardware. The EASA says there are major differences between a PC-based training FMS, a flight management system software, and an embedded FMS software. In particular, the FMS simulation software does not have the same overriding protection and redundancies that is included in the certified flight software. So, hopefully, those hacks don't happen. Yes, now this brings us to our comment of the week. Last week, we asked you how you feel about the IRS looking into social networks for tax fraud, and our comment of the week comes from How Peculiar. How Peculiar writes, if you put something in the public domain, then I don't have any problem with them checking for fraud. Same with insurance fraud, abuses of various aid programs, etc. When you post something or add something to the public domain, it's for anyone to see. And if it isn't, even if it isn't for who you had hoped for. And if you think what you do on the computer is private, you're very naive. I don't know about that last bit, but I will say, yes, this is why I don't tweet about things like insurance. Yeah, You know, whether, you know, insurance fraud or not, uh, which obviously not, but I'm just saying like, you know, you know how I feel. I don't, I don't tweet about banks. I don't yeah. feel, tweet about mortgages. I don't tweet about insurance. None of that stuff. Yeah, I won't tweet about my horrible insurance by name. Definitely not. Not but by name. I'll complain. I'll yeah. complain well, all Twitter's day. Twitter's great for complaining. <laughs> oh, yeah, it totally What's is. Our, <laughs> what about this week? All right, so this week in the recent Rules Committee hearing on CISPA, Representative Jared Polis noted that this directly hurts the confidence of Internet users. Internet users, if this were to become law, would be much more hesitant to provide their personal information, even if assured under the terms of use that it will be kept personal because the company would be completely indemnified if they voluntarily gave it to the United States government. This week, we'd like to know from you. Now, if CISPA were to pass in its current form, would you be hesitant to provide personal information to social websites? Let us know in the comments. Now, remember, you can find all the ways to subscribe at threatwire.org and get involved in our Google Plus community. That's where the conversation goes all week. And it's awesome. So you to should totally join. And with that, my name is Shannon Morse. I'm Darren Kitchen. And we will see you on the internet. Au revoir. Bye-bye.